8 to 12 hours. Okay. Trader, 1 to 2 hours. Free water not out. That's uh, the time recommendation. So we should check this retention time. To check the retention time, we need to do know the separate volume. Okay, that is the same thing that we showed last time for the separator. Okay, three phase separator was the same. Um, I think we're done with the heater treater already. Question on heater treater. To not trigger you anything, I will just say oil capacity. Okay, but when we actually use it, we, we may try to use it for liquid, so it's a little bit more conservative. Okay. Or we, we will do more calculation based on the setting volume and retention time to check if it's match or not. Question on heater trigger. Can you size the heater trigger? Maybe. Number one, we check BTU per hour. Okay, that's number one. We will go for direct heating. Number two, we check what temperature do we heat to? Okay, temperature that we heat to depend on what type of emulsion. Okay, that's number two. Number three, we check C value. That is number three to check. When we know the C value, we plug it back into that equation. We know the flow rate, we can calculate the diameter. Typically, we use vertical treater, as you see. Okay, this is the step to, to size it. BTU per hour come from the shaft. If we do all this and we are not quite happy or a little bit uh, hesitant, we may double check it with another shaft, this shaft. Shell height multiplied by that much, shell height that much multiplied by that much. Okay, so we can use the shaft as a backup. Good? Try to use the equation first because this equation already come with uh, C value, so it's kind of more accurate. Question for me. So everyone can size a little trigger, no problem. How big, how small? All right. That's a retention time recommendation. You may need, you may not need to know that it's eight to twelve, okay? Or you, twenty-five minutes, fifteen minutes, or anything. I I won't ask you. Is it eight to twelve hours? You write that, no, it's not about that memorizer number. But what you need to know is the order of magnitude. Order of magnitude means how much do you expect the retention time inside the gun barrel? Is it in the second, minute, couple hours, or many hours? Couple hours means one to three hours. Okay? Or half a day. So you need to know the order of magnitude. Okay? Trigger has more retention time than free water knockout, if you notice. Okay? Alright. This part is about the one that we did in the lab. Um did you that? Okay. The internal component that you need to know for sure is like if I black this out, make it red. You need to know what is that, what is that thing, water control. Where's the oil bucket? You need to know that oil bucket. Water coming out, or there's a water breaker. All these things, you knew, right? That's from the lab, no problem at all. Liquid high calculation, have you had the chance to review this? It's like a YouTube thing. Left side, you have taller level than the right hand side. The right hand side has lower level because left hand side is kind of less dense. So if we know the gap difference, we know the height of each height, we may be able to calculate the ratio of the density. Okay, review those, easy enough. Gun barrel. Uh, somehow gun barrel, doesn't show that it has equalizer. Is that because we just have atmospheric pressure in the barrel already? Maybe that's why it doesn't have equalizer. Heat the trigger has equalizer line over there. You remember that? 
very classic question about this thing is this height is this much where's the uh, HO where's HW or something given HW prime, HW, HO where's the uh, level or something that's come from the OAX exam, try to review it it's based on hydrostatic air that, just that equation so if I know rho R I know rho W I may not know the via, uh, the, the interface over here because it's adjustable. So W prime is unknown, but I know that I want to set the liquid level or water interface about this much. I plug it in over there. I know the oil thickness. I plug it in over there. Eventually, I will know W H W prime, and I know how much do I have to adjust that. Good? Question, question, question. No question yet. So this is about uh, gun barrel. Um, gun barrel normally doesn't have any heat. No heat, no any treater or anything. Sometimes we can put it, okay, with direct heater, if you want to. Oh, okay, about the spreader plate. Um, I think I may not say it right last time. In the field trip, oil go down here and it kind of go up and hit the plate and it spread out. Okay, it's not like come from the top and hit. No, it go from the bottom and uh, hit the plate and spread out. That's how the spreader plate works in camera. All right, this is a sometime camera with in direct heating, sometimes we have direct heating. If it's sweet, slightly corrosive, uh, loose or moderate, or untidy motion, we can put some heat in directly. Okay. If it is very corrosive emulsion, okay, we may use indirect heater. If it's very corrosive and it requires a lot of heat, we may need steam generator. Okay. Good. So this is a different time. So which way is um, more efficient way of heating fluid? Direct heating or indirect heating? Direct, right? Because we heat it directly. Okay. So we will we will try to not put any heat in camera if we already have heater treater. Okay. More heating elements means more maintenance and more chance that something bad happen, okay? This is the gun barrel size. Look at the volume. 1,500 barrel, very big. See, this is big size, okay, good. This is shipping weight, that's all. So which one are you gonna use for your design project? Do you need gun barrel in your design? Who, who, does, who doesn't have the design project? Everyone have it, right? For for the facility part. Maybe, okay, maybe you take care of something else. Uh, there's a project that you have to write. Not not very much. We will talk about that later. Okay, this is the size of the gun barrel to show you that it's very big, and this is the shot that comes with the gun barrel. If we know the temperature, we know if it we have emulsion, we can tell if the gun barrel is big enough or not, okay? The way to use is the same way of other shot. There's a zoom in version. Steam generator, normally we don't use unless it's corrosive and we need some, a lot of heat. That's the equation that comes with it. I just skip it, okay? You can see that I just skip it because uh, we leave that for graduate students, how about that? Normally we don't use that steam generator, okay? But there's a chart for that. There's a model number, firebox rating. You can tell that it has, it can do more heat. The okay, steam generator go up to four million BTU per hour. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to go back. Uh, that's one go to four million BTU per hour. What about this thing? This is the two million. You see, this is indirect heating. Direct heating. Oh, this one can do four million too. 
Uh, steam generator is another option. Typically, we don't do anything like that. Okay. Almost done. Heat loss. Okay. Heat loss from the vessel. Uh, typically, we estimate is ten percent, right? For the heater treater equation, the heater heater treater equation already come with the heat loss calculation, but here's a more accurate version on how to estimate the heat loss. Okay, this heat loss equation require k value. K value depend on okay if I have twenty mile per hour wind, I use that much k value. If I have thirteen, uh, if I have ten mile per hour wind, I use that much k. And as it move, I use nine point three. Okay, so this tell if I have a tank and there's a wind blow across it, how much exactly is the heat loss? How many BTU per hour of the heat loss that I make, should expect? Okay, why do we need this? Because level is very windy, right? Is it? It's very windy. The the shaft, the tank, everything that they recommend should be account for this already. But it may not be lab of condition. Over there, maybe just okay, they may have just five mile per hour, but here we have more. T sub T, T sub A, T sub T is treating temperature. T sub A is uh, design minimum outside ambient temperature. So this means heat loss from the vessel change in the winter is a lot more, right? Okay. So this is how we estimate it. Do we use it? Mm, maybe we just use a chart with that equation would be sufficient. Unless we have some abnormal thing happen and we require to double check it, then we can do this. Good? Application, vertical heater, blah, 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 blah. Go read it by yourself, okay? This, uh, I expect you to read it, of course. Uh, this thing, gravity separation, play color sense, Micron that it remove anything, filtration. This is like a summary. Read it by yourself, and that's a reference. Uh, what's this thing called? PSIG BTU per hour. That's kind of thermodynamic property of saturated steam. This table is needed when we do like steam generates generator calculation for practice. Okay, or okay. more detail later, just for your reference. Not in the exam. No more question for me? Let's move on to the tank. Okay. So you don't go anywhere yet. Okay, tank, storage tank. How many tanks do I need? Yes, sir, how many tanks do I need? So if I have if I, the several well come to the central battery, I produce about 2,000 barrel per day. How many tanks do I have? So if I sell it every day, maybe I have that many tanks. Sometimes number of tanks, the volume, total volume of the tank may not match to the volume of total production volume. If that is the case, um, we prefer if possible to have double capacity. So if I if I produce 800 barrel per day, I may have 1,600 barrel capacity. So that if anything happen, I have one day to do any fixing, right? If I have just the same capacity, maybe I have to slow down the production a little bit. Okay. All right. That's about number of tank. That's how the tank look like. And you have seen it already. On the top we have, what's that, what's that? Big hatch. Big hatch. And we have that pipe, what's that pipe for? Overflow. Overflow. Okay, we, we, we may have that thing everywhere, overflow. We have, what's that thing, what's that thing? Labor indicator? That's a for automatic safety. I think it's have a display over there. I think it can be level indicator based on the head pressure. Okay. Okay. Why do we need that? I see 
What is that called? Wind song. That the name wind song will be like that sometimes. Yeah. It's important if the wind flow like that, so it seems like it go from here to that way, right? Do we want to be upwind or downwind? So look at this wind flow that direction. Do I stand over here and try to open that? Or I stand over there and open that. That's option two. That's option one. Option two or option one? One. one. Did you option two? Okay, okay. Let's let you guys answer this. Which one? What's your name, sir? Ben. Ben? And this is also Ben. Okay. <laughs> ben at the back. Okay, let's say I don't have any we know that for sure. We don't have any H2S. It's not it's very sweet. It's not sound. Is it okay to stay at number two? No, no H2S at all. Can people die if they stay at number two? If we don't have any H2S? Can they die? Why? Okay. Next, what's your name, ma'am? Sandra, if you don't have any H2S and people accidentally, they should not, but they did stay at number two position, that win. They open the deep hatch, can they die? Maybe. Next, what's your name, ma'am? Currency. Can they die if they are down wind? If they die, why is that? What kill them? No H2S. H2S doesn't kill them. Fire. Lightning. No lightning, no fire. You can't breathe. Make air. You breathe oxygen. That's what you need. So what happened is there are many people dead already because open the deep hand and stay down wind. There's no H2S. But there are vapor of gas. When you get vapor of gas, you don't get oxygen. Maybe you fall down, okay? Or maybe you're dead. So that's uh, very important. Okay, at the end, I will talk about the number of people that dead because of that, and we have about... Oh, this one doesn't show. They don't talk over here. All right, that's about this slide. There are many people die sick fatality in uh, 2014, okay, due to working in the oil field, okay. Um, look at this one. An oil field worker whose army duty was to catch the amount of liquid in three oil tanks on site was found dead next to a tank battery. Okay. So uh, if you have choice, maybe do something else, but that's that's another very dangerous if you stay up with. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Alright, the tank. They typically use the what is the tank sign with the uh, OTC that we saw? 300 barrel? Is it? That's a common size that they donate to us, okay, because they have a lot of that. We, if it's 500 barrel or less, we can put it in a truck, okay. If it's larger than 1,000 barrel, it needs on-site construction. Cannot be moved around, okay. Water tank, typically it's made from fiberglass. Okay? When you knock it, you will hear that it's not like steel, steel uh, tank. On the field trip, you see it's a steel tank, but it's internally coated with plastic. Okay, inside it is coated so that it doesn't have any rust. So that's a ASTM for the carbon steel. Not to memorize, it's just for you to know that there's a standard for that. You know how many static build additions with fiberglass tanks? Um, I don't know, what, what's your experience? 
they have it? And how do we they give it? There's a ground line or something? Use steel tank for water. When they, when they go out on the oxy, oxy tank battery, they use a the fiberglass. Yeah, I, I see some of them use fiberglass. Okay. Vapor recovery unit. Okay. As a rule of thumb, all tanks must be connected to VIU, vapor recovery unit. Okay. This includes both oil and water tank. Why do we need to connect water tank to VIU? Because water, not just pure water, it has methane, some gas in it, okay? Uh, that can be 0.5 standard cubic foot per one barrel of water from water tank, okay? So when we open water tank, something is safe, stay up green, okay? Uh, this is a guideline for total amount of gas from our tank to VIU. Condensate well, where I dump two tanks after two stages of separation, total gas to VIU is about 100,000 okay, standard cubic foot for 1,000 barrel of oil per day. Where Texas oil well, where oil dump from heater treater to a tank, total gas to VIU is about 60. Okay. Just so you know that. In the oil tank, it's half that much, okay, per 1,000 barrel of course, okay. We don't want to just burn those gas. We want to sell it, so we put in a uh, vapor recovery unit. Light unit, um, sometimes we have a recirc recirculating pump for storage tank, okay. Uh, one pump on the light unit, it's normally needed so that it pump to uh, <coughs> the cell part. Okay, oil can be transported with trucks. Do you use, when do we use truck or when do we use black unit? Recently, when you have a pipeline or when you have no infrastructure you can use a truck. Okay, if we produce a lot and we don't have pipeline, we maybe we do pipeline. So. Okay. So, but what he said is correct. If we don't have much production, we don't have much infrastructure, just use a truck, okay? Well, what's a lot? What's a lot depends on the company policy, and uh, I don't know. For them to know, they, do, they run a number. Run a number and find out this much truck, use this much money, and we produce that much. It will tell how much is a lot. That's required number, okay? Guideline. If four or more trucks per day are needed, consider to use black unit, okay? Plus build pipeline, it can be less expensive, okay? So four trucks, maybe that's, if you need more than four trucks, that could be a lot, doesn't need to be a lot, but that's require some kind of economic calculation. So do you base that off your initial production or off of some point in the future? It should be some point in the future. Is, um, future. Initial production may last just a couple of months. Yeah. Okay, one recirculating pump from the bottom of oil tank to the heater treater, if there is any solid or impurity that requires more treatment. Okay, so in the tank battery, you don't see any pump at the bottom of oil tank, but very common, they have it. Okay. At the bottom of the oil tank, what do you think is that? Water. Water could be at the bottom of the oil tank or some solid particle. So from time to time, they pump that part out back to heat the treater. Okay? So there's a recommendation, just use one small pump on each tank so that we can pump water, maybe will be some water, some solid particle back to heat the treater. Okay? For low oil production, tank battery, oil water must be trucked out and used one pump for to recirculate oil. This is a, we use this recommendation for the design of last year when we do the project. This design, 
this year project will be a lot less. Like last year they write about like 8,000 words, 10,000 words or something. This year I don't plan, plan that because we have final exam instead. All right? Is that better? Yes, kind of better. Pound for motor size. Okay, another recommendation. One pound to solve water disposal well or water flood station if water is not chopped out. So the question on how many pounds do we need on the tank battery is a little bit like tricky, right? Even if we maybe it depends, do we chop it out? Or do we use a lag unit? If we use a lag unit, of course we have one one pound on the lag unit, right? If we have several tanks, each of them may require circulating back to to the heater treater. Okay. <clears throat> So track has about that much capacity used at most one to two track per day. It could be one per week. Okay. If you produce uh, 500 barrel per day, maybe we, we don't use track. Okay. No pump from heater treater to oil tank or water tank. Oh, what is this about? Behind Lanley Heidi. I don't need a pump from to move oil from heater treater to oil tank. Is that true? What do I do? How do I move oil from heater treater to oil tank? The tank's lower pressure. What the tank one? The tank's lower pressure. Okay. We have fifty over there in the heater treater. And the tank is lower pressure. Whenever we open the tank down valve, it goes. No problem with that. So we don't need pump. Do we have pump from free water dump out to heat the trigger? No. Do we have pump from vertical separator to free water dump out? No. Within the tank battery, we use the pressure itself to, to push liquid out, not the pump. We don't use pump anywhere in that except at the bottom of oil tank. VI, uh, VIU is a compressor, okay? And on the lag unit. Storage tank and how they connect together, equalizer line, okay? But you have seen this already. Tank specification, use API 12F, just so you know. So it's just look just the same that you have seen on the field trip. Okay, and we have number 14, what's number 14? What's number 14? Clean out, right? Open that, get inside. Deep patch number 9, all that. So you have seen all that, okay? Front wheel, top wheel, side wheel. Okay, there's the top wheel. Sorry, tank to top, bottom part. Some bottom part, we have this drain thing to take out pump any solid if it accumulates on the bottom. Okay, depending on your design. And uh, sometimes it has like a cord over here so we can pump it out this way if there is any solid or water accumulated. In. There will be just a little bit of water droplet. But when it accumulates over five months, ten months, maybe it's a lot. Okay, this is the size of those tanks. We have 300 barrel. That's what we like, right? What you want to pay attention is this. Pressure rating and vacuum rating. 16 ohms equal to one pound. So it's just one PSI, okay? And we have vacuum rating. Okay, next to Heidi, what's your name, sir? Brandon. Brandon, why do we, what, what is that about? Half? Half inch? Is it, is it ounce? Ounce per inch square. Why do you have that vacuum rating? What does it mean, Brandon? So if we go more than that, what happened? If you go more than that, then it's fine. What? 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 You can't go more than half ounce back. So if I go more than half, half ounce, like. Five ounce vacuum, what happened? 
Oh, that's too bad. If you don't have the patch, if you have the patch, the patch, let the add in, right? So nothing really happened, okay? But it's, it's bad. We don't want oxygen in the gas part. Because if we have oxygen, they don't really let us sell that. See what I'm saying? So if we have the patch open and let oxygen go inside, how can we sell that ga gas? We cannot. What do we do? We burn it, we flat it, okay? All right, approximate working capacity, okay? That's tell us how many barrels do we have. So when I buy 300 barrel tank, it says working capacity is not 300 barrel. It's not like we're gonna completely make it full, right? Not that, so it's just that. All right, so keep in mind that working capacity is not the same as that. The rest is just too much detail, okay? Just, just so you know, diameter, the height, all those things. Good? Let's move on. Number of tank, okay? Recommendation is enough for one day production. Fasting tank battery use six or 500 barrel tank for 2,000 barrel per day production, two or 500 barrel fiberglass for water tank. Small battery, we will use less, okay? All right, the inlet to the tank battery is 75 PSI. The outlet leaving the tank battery is 45 PSI. These are the number on the classic tank battery of last year, because this year we have three three thousand instead of, instead of four three thousand, so we don't go there. So when it comes in on the header, you remember that three header on the field trip OTC, it comes in at about 75 PSI. When it leaves the tank battery, it go on the lag unit and it become about 45 PSI, okay, on the lag unit. Um, so this means we don't have much pressure drop, is that what it's, what it's about? How much is the pressure drop for the oil stream? Okay. Behind random, what's your name, sir? Okay. Okay. How much is the pressure drop? for oil from the header. Let's say at the header is 75 PSI. How much is the pressure drop do we have for oil? It dropped from 75 PSI G to? Zero. So that we, we put in the tank. How come it's 45 PSI G over there? What is that about? We cannot put 45 PSI G in the tank, okay? When it leaves tank battery, it leaves at 45 PSIG. How can we go from 0 to 45? Okay. How do we do that? So where's that pump? It's on the lag unit. You saw that? You remember that? So when they sell the oil at the inlet of the, the pump of the lag unit is kind of fit by the gravity on 0 PSI, a little bit couple ohms. It goes to the pump, it push out at that pressure. Good? Alright, so that is to go in the pipeline. Why do we need to know that kind of number? What is that number for? Okay, next you can what's your name, sir? Chris. Chris, why do we need to know it's 45 degree? Uh, 45 PSI G. How do we use that number? Whatever downstream needs. Or who need that number? Where do we use that number? Pipeline. Pipeline. If we use small pipe, the the pressure drop in the pipeline should be less than that 45 psi g. Okay. See what I'm saying? Otherwise, it needs another station to boost it up. Right. So that's kind of the typical value for doing the calculation. Thin patch on the top. We can use the tank oil sample. Check water cut and we check water cut. Yeah, there's a clean out thick patch, look like that. There's a specification, it can, there's another type of thick patch. Okay, it doesn't need to be a circle. Okay, they may use this color cut thing, drop it down and find out when it change color, it tells all water interface, okay? Or we may put this tape in, okay? That's take an oil sample. We may use this hydrometer 
hydrometer to tell the density. Who ever used this thing? Can I, did you use that? How do we use this hydrometer? Who used it for? Oh, you to go home or what? Okay, Doug, how do we use this hydrometer? Hunter. Hunter. Um, something, what was the name? How do you use that hydrometer? Yes. It tells you the gravity of your water or your oil, whatever it's calibrated for, and it floats at a certain depth depending on the density of the fluid. Very easy, right? We have a fluid. We drop that thing in, and oh, and we read the mark. Maybe it's not that. <laughs> we drop this in the fluid, and we read over that. That level tell the density. So we just drop it in. Okay, it's kind of floating in the middle, and we just read the level. We still have some more time. Tank gauging. Uh, this tank gauging okay is 18. Two more minutes, two more. Let's finish tank gauging. Tank gauging is tell the depth, okay, feet, inch, all those things. How do we do it? We add those numbers together. For example, if we have um, this much height, okay, in that oil tank, I have 11 feet plus 3 inch plus half inch. Go back to the table, add those numbers together, then I get the total of volume of the tank. Good? Uh, let's stop here. Thank you for coming. Let's check the time. Oh, you know I still have 20 more seconds. Okay, let's let it go.